As I said last time, I'm just upholding television. The others did, and it was very possible with with other other leaders. Yeah. Uh, did did you learn anything from that? Did your views change in any way because of what was said to you here in that format? Well, actually, not in any major way, because you would be amazed at how much um, our thinking was alike on so many of the things discussed. But uh, in connection with the, the question also on structure, the difference was that uh, I have been, the summits that I've been to before, uh, each head of state would make a statement, and uh, it or not, they had made their statement. Well, the difference was here, it opened up a subject. Uh, let us say that the subject had to do with trade. We'd open up the subject, and everyone could express their views and so forth, and then we kept going and discussing uh, to see what we could all agree on as a consensus of what we would do with this uh, in, in the area of this subject that would further benefit uh, not only us, but the world. Do you, do you feel that you persuaded anybody to some view that they didn't have uh, before they came in? Not, not really. The, uh, the whole idea of convergence, uh, the, that the answer is that, that you can't have uh, one nation recover uh, without the others. That uh, this is a world recession, that what we do affects uh, each other, and uh, that therefore we must have more surveillance, more constant communication, uh, particularly at our ministerial level, on the progress that we're all making. And this, in this included the uh, developing countries also, that uh, they cannot be out here on the other side of a, of a door that their uh, good economic situation, their prosperity, uh, is vital to us as ours is to them. And um, as I say, there was, a, there was great agreement on this. But what then did happen was you had the thoughts of, of others that uh, contributed to uh, coming to a consensus as to how we were going to go about this, what we were going to do. and. Remember that the, the idea of the subject wasn't just chaos of anyone coming up with what they thought. A lot of this was based on the fact that at the ministerial level, in the OECD, the NATO summit, in uh, the discussions on uh, international, uh, the international monetary funds and all, uh, we, we were well prepared in advance of knowing what was on uh, the minds of each other. Yeah. <clears throat> this was a summit designed so that those of you who met privately could, on several occasions, could have a frank exchange, candid exchange of views, candid, personal, and yet you're saying that, and there were diverse views in here, and yet you're saying, in spite of all of that, nobody's views changed very much? Is <coughs> well, the in that, as I interpreted the question there, was there any uh, sudden situation where you had just diametrically opposed ideas as, say, a way to bring about prosperity? Well, no. Everyone recognized that, um, for example, in our, our own problems of deficits and interest rates and the uh, bad effect that they have had uh, on the economy, uh, there was general agreement on on all of these things, and then the thing was how, uh, for example, is, well, it's in that statement that came out differing than some conferences where the statement was written in advance and before you'd had the discussions, that statement was the result of the discussions. Let me give you a for instance. You said in your personal addendum to the statement that the world now recognizes that there should be no quick fixes, which is your yes. position in the United States. But I know you were told by some of the leaders in there of, that despite 
the best expected performance of the economy, unemployment is going to remain high for some time to come. Recession may even deepen in some countries. And there are people who are concerned about the political and social upheaval that this could cause, and therefore might favor some kind of quick fix, at least to avert the kind of crises the, America, the United States faces. Uh, the doc did that discussion not temper your views about at least some quick fixes somewhere? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, one of the participants re referred to quick fixes as quack medicine. And that you know, we've proven by experience they don't work. They only worsen the situation. So, uh, and there was great willingness on the part of all of them that they realized that they had to face up to um, some social changes in order to get control of excessive spending. And as I say, the document attests that uh, the statement uh, to the outcome. We didn't leave any subject uh, up in the air uh, and say, well, you know, we're differing on this, uh, let's move on to something else. No. We stayed until we'd worked out what we all felt was a way to go uh, on, on the particular subject. And, it was, uh, and there was no vote taken. There, was no, there were no winners or losers. There wasn't any case in which uh, five said, well, uh, to two, uh, uh, you're outvoted and this is what we're going to say. No, before we settled on it, all seven were in agreement. Your administration uh, wasn't, uh, it's well known that your administration wasn't enthusiastic about an international uh, conference, uh, monetary conference. Did you modify your view during the summit? <coughs> the funny thing was, in the conversations, it isn't so much a mod modifying of views as it is a learning of what the views really were. For example, the <coughs> principal proponent of such a conference uh, opened by making it plain that uh, he had not meant in any way that we go back 40 years and follow a pattern of something that was adopted 40 years ago. The world has changed, but uh, that it was something to be looked at. Well, we ourselves had come with the idea that just as out of the Versailles summit and well, Many people have been quick to say that nothing good came out of that. A lot did. We have had, since the Versailles summit, a relationship at the ministerial level on several subjects that has been ongoing and has made great progress with regard to trade, uh, east-west situation, the, uh, all of these things. And so the idea that these same ministers will now, as they go forward in this surveillance, mutual surveillance, to make sure that uh, we're not getting off the track in some country or other that might set back for all of us the recovery, that this they will look at very closely and see if such a conference would be a help in what we're trying to do. Now it's going to depend on what they all decide and what they recommend. Mr. Mr. President, the dollar is uh, reaching record highs against other currencies. Do you think that this uh, positive development for the world economy and for the American recovery? There's no question about the value of the dollar that it results from our success with reducing inflation. And of course we want to go on reducing inflation, but we also want to see as the others uh, progress uh, that this levels off because remember the high dollar uh, is not an unmitigated blessing for us. We will have a trade deficit this year of probably 60 billion dollars simply because the high value of the dollar has priced us out of many foreign markets. Uh, we'd like to see a better balance. But we believe the better balance will come through convergence. And so uh, here again, out of this has come the decision that we're going to, we're going to monitor each other uh, closely 
on how we're progressing in this. May I go to the political side a moment, Mr. President? Yeah. Well, could I? Yeah. Wait just one second, because uh, I interrupted him a moment ago, and then we'll, we'll take yours. Hey. Mr. President, you indicated in an interview last week that the Soviets were stepping up their aid to Nicaragua. I wondered whether you see the possibility of a superpower confrontation developing in Central America, and whether increased Soviet aid requires a res uh, an increased response from the United States. Well, it is a, a little off the summit. I did, uh, in one session, uh, simply explain uh, as well as I could the entire situation in Central America, and many of them admitted that uh, they had not been clear on some of what was going on. Um, there has been a step up in Soviet activity as to bringing in supplies, but we still believe that our plan of economic aid and such military assistance as we think is needed there, the line of supplies, training mainly, uh, should go forward. But again, call attention to the fact that uh, our economic aid is uh, three to one uh, in value over the military aid. We want indeed a political settlement uh, if it can be reached. Did, did you ask your allies for help on that question? I mean, did you ask them to, I mean? No, I just, uh, on this one, this was just one where I gave them a report. And, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the, the weather, Mr. President, gives us about five more minutes or we don't oh, go. Lord. So mm -hmm. let's take these three over here. Mr. Now. President, from a very general, going, from a very general point of view, now that you have heard the opinion of all the other leaders at the same time, what is your feeling on the future of relations with Russia? Is it going to be an ever-increasing tension and the hostility, or there will be a point where there will be a thought? I'm not asking about your hopes, but about your gut feeling of what actually is going to happen. If there is an increase of tension, it will be the Soviet Union that causes it. Let me just quickly, because I know time is important, point something out. Sitting at that table in this summit, were the representatives, the heads of state, of nations that not too many years ago were deeply engaged in a hatred-filled war with each other. And here we were, sitting as closely as we're sitting, with a really warm personal friendship that has developed among us. But more than that, with a friendship between our peoples and what is the cause of disarray in the world? If we have been able to do this with our erstwhile enemies, doesn't it sort of follow that we are the ones who want a peaceful world? I don't mean when I say we, the United States. I mean all of us, the people who are around that table, uh, that we are the ones who are striving for peace and have been successful in healing those terrible deep wounds but one country that was an ally in that great war is the cause of tension in the world and that the things that we had to think about with regard to our own national security all dealt with our national security vis-a-vis -vis that particular country. Now, over and over again in talking trade, we stressed that we don't want a trade war with the Soviet Union. We are going to, we've been forced into having to view our relationship with our own security in mind, but I couldn't help but think several times, why in the world isn't that other so-called superpower, why didn't they have someone sitting at that table able to get along with the rest of us? Do you see better or worse relations? If you were to predict today, do you see better or worse relations with the Soviet Union? I see better, because I think all of us together have a more realistic view of them. Now, this may not be visible in the rhetoric in the immediate future, because there's an awful lot of rhetoric that is delivered for home consumption. They've accused you of wrecking detente, for example. What's that? They've accused you of wrecking detente with the INF statement. Well, detente as it existed, was only a cover under which the Soviet Union built up the greatest military power in the world. Uh, I don't think we need that kind of a detente. But all of us, we're ready 
at any time, that they want to make it plain by deed, not word, that they want to join in the same things that are of concern to all of us, the betterment of life for our people. Mr. President, uh, you spent uh, some time in the uh, last uh, couple of evenings talking about the Middle East as well, I understand, uh, with your partners. And uh, most recently, there has been an uh, increasing tension between both Syrian and Israeli forces in Lebanon right now. You have an agreement between Lebanon and Israel for a troop withdrawal, but the Syrians are not cooperating. Really, without their cooperation, you have very little. What is the next step? And can you tell me, with the increased tensions, have you been in contact with the Soviet Union uh, to get the Syrians to uh, cool it? Well, this is hardly a summit meeting thing, but let me say we're continuing what we've been doing all the time, and that is trying to persuade the Syrians who had made a statement in the very beginning of all these talks that they would withdraw when the others did. And we're talking to the other, their Arab friends and allies about this, and I think making some, uh, some progress. Um, so this does not require any new course. And there, as to the, whether there were several meetings, there was just one meeting in which I summed up and gave my uh, uh, well, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I was thinking there. I was talking about something else. No, on the Middle East, we did have one session uh, and a dinner session. And uh, actually, it was more of a, there was no quarrel with what we're doing. It was total support, but there was more a report on some of those who had been closer to the situation back over the years, our European neighbors, uh, giving their views on some of the things that were at issue there and some of the problems. Let me see, real quick, there's two of them. Yes. Just in light of the INF uh, declaration, can you envision uh, an outcome, an interim solution in Geneva, which would delay the stationing of the missiles in Europe? I don't think you can, you can predict on anything there without getting into the dangerous field of, of discussing uh, uh, strategy. Frankly, my own opinion is that the negotiations won't really get down to brass tacks until they see that we are going forward with the scheduled deployment. Does that mean afterward that you won't get a, uh, that you want the negotiations won't go forward until after you deploy? Oh no, we're going to try. We're the negotiation, the meetings are on now. We're going to try to negotiate. I am just anticipating from the Soviet side they have based their entire propaganda campaign, everything they've been doing, on seeking to prevent the beginning deployment. And we have a schedule of deployment, the request of our NATO allies, and uh, we're, going to, we're going to follow that. Uh, that Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank President, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I'm not just speaking now uh, for our own country or our side, but I want you to know repeatedly volunteered to me how wonderfully they were being treated, how warmly they were greeted by all of you here in the community, but also how their every need, whether it had to do with the business of the summit or whether it just was for their personal comfort, how every need was, had been met and they were overwhelmed by this, plus the fact that they said they felt a great kinship and a part of now American history, more so than they ever had before by virtue of having the meeting in this particular place and among all of you who have made this historic monument such a wonderful and spectacular place. So again, I just, in the bottom of my heart, thank you not only for our own personal comfort and what you've done, but you've made a sizable contribution to better international understanding. So thank you again. Thank you.